Um, this will bring us to our public comments section of the board meeting this evening. Please make sure that you've signed in at the back with your name and address uh, before you come forward uh, to the podium uh, to speak. Um, public comment is, list is limited to three minutes per person. Um, there is a timer up here on the wall which will count down as you speak, so if you wish to know how much time you have left, um, you may look up there. If your comment does pertain to an action item, which is one that we will vote on uh, later on in the meeting, we would ask that you wait until that item comes up for discussion to make your comment. You'll be allowed time to comment after the board discusses the item, but before the board votes on the item. Comments that are related to disciplinary actions or other matters, which could be the subject of a grievance process, including those uh, in which the board could be involved as a hearing panel or reviewing authority, or comments that are derogatory of any person, business, or organization will be ruled out of order. If you would like to make public comment at this time, please step forward and please state your name and your address. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Steve Kleekamp. I think you may know my wife. I'm here to talk about retaliation for people who speak out against the pub public schools in the city who are served with, who are summoned to appear for alleged misconduct, whatever you want to call it, with, which are completely baseless, and I think everyone in here knows that. Worse than that, Columbia Public Schools are apparently paying for her, this person's uh, legal re representation. So, thing I want to say about that issue is that this person either doesn't have a good handle on her child's media applications or she's lying. I'm going to leave you with that. If any of you have looked at this information, there's no way you can disagree with that. I think it's a disgrace. Horrible. Thank you. Good evening, Robin Shelp. Um, first, I want to thank you for creating a task force to come up with solutions for the recording policy last month. Parents and students with disabilities are able to record right now, and they need to have these procedures in place. I think we've seen that this month. I'm a little surprised that a month later, though, the task force has still not met. These things take time, which is why it is important to have timelines in place. Good goals have timelines. I don't think it's unrealistic for the task force to put a timeline in place ready to present at the next board meeting. This is a simple and reasonable ask from parents who have been requesting a policy change since April. I also want to thank you for not passing the seclusion and restraint policy, JGGA, at the last meeting. I think the changes would have been detrimental for teachers and for students. Many parents shared their concerns. Thank you for taking the time to listen to every parent and voting to rethink the policy. This is why public comment is so important and a written submission read after a vote would be useless. As the policy committee meets on Wednesday, I hope it will review the concerning language and make necessary changes. Um, as I've mentioned before in the public comment section, um, state and federal seclusion and restraint laws are very weak. But I recently came across this article which discusses how civil rights laws do apply to seclusion and restraint. It's put out by the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights. It addresses the limits that federal civil rights laws impose on the use of seclusion and restraint by public elementary and secondary school districts. The policies, procedures, and practices regarding seclusion and restraint must be the same for children without disabilities as they are for children with disabilities. If a school in which 100% of the students with disabil have disabilities feels the need to build small seclusion rooms, then there should be the similar rooms at those schools which don't even have self-contained classrooms for children with disabilities. If a child with a disability is placed in seclusion for a certain offense, then a child without disabilities should be placed in seclusion for the same offense. I am not saying that we need to seclude more students. I'm saying that we need to be very aware of how we are using seclusion making sure that policies and practices are equitable for all students. 
seclusion cannot continue to be used by any school on any student as a form of discipline. There is much more information in this article and I would encourage you to read it. I know a lot's been said in the past about the design of high road seclusion spaces. And while I don't like these rooms, the issue is much more than the design of the spaces. The implementation of the policies and the procedures and how these rooms are being used in practice is what needs to be examined. Um, oh, I have 17 seconds left. I'm gonna leave this with you. It's very long, so if anybody does want to see what the Office of the Department of Education says, um, I can email the electronic versions. Where are these supposed to be left? Oh, in the box. Back there's a yeah. blue box there's back a box there. Back Sorry, there. if you'd like to leave something. Hello, Tara Arnett. After our last board meeting, I left feeling like we were all heading in a positive direction of understanding and cooperation. However, a few days later, an email was sent to staff that appeared to undermine any progress that may have been made. The email confused parents, staff, and the general public not knowing who was being referred to or pointed out. Many took this to mean special education parents that are working diligently to obtain the best education for their children and also create a positive working relationship with staff. Shortly after the email was circulated, I had a regularly scheduled meeting with my son's teacher. I was left needing to assure her that she was incredible and that we have full faith and confidence in her abilities and our relationship with her. We have no problems with her and we love her. But she was not confident in that after having read the email and felt very thankful that I reassured her of that. There's been no further clarifications or apologies in regard to this email and divisions were possibly created where none previously existed. Again, our teachers are incredibly hardworking and doing an incredible job with the resources they have to serve our students. We are simply asking to further strengthen their abilities and the educational opportunities for our students. Our advocacy efforts should not be retaliated against. We're simply doing the best we can with what we have. I would invite you all to attend tomorrow night's regularly scheduled Como Septa monthly meeting at 6.30 at Center for Early Learning North. I get confused, my son used to be at ECSC, mm -hmm. the new name. Um, you will see that we are a passionate group, simply working our hardest to obtain the best education possible for our children. Thank you. My name is Candace Holmes Barnes. Um, I want to piggyback off of them retaliation. Wow. Um, because of the claim that I filed in March, my kids have been retaliated against almost every day. Mm -hmm. It's something. Um, from being arrested on a third degree assault, no police, no ambulance involved, to um, District people coming up to the hospital saying we're friends when my kids are in the hospital. My, kid, my son being kicked off the football team. Um, to now, he was accused of theft two days ago. And now all of a sudden, oh no, they were just taken and given back. Um, I just feel like, I'm just disappointed in the fact that um, I filed this to get apologies and to help hold people accountable. This is what you're talking about are specific students and potential disciplinary actions and actions in which this board may sit as a reviewing body. Um, and those kind of comments do not belong in public comment, mm. but you are more than welcome to address them by email to each individual board member or to any member of the administration that you would like. Well, retaliation, I just feel like um, parents and teachers should work together to come up with some type of um, agreement, um, some type of discipline, disciplinary action, um, where they sit down and have communications because apparently CPS doesn't know how to do it. Thank, thank you, you ma'am. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Carla Hurtado. I'm here to address communication issues. Um, and I was browsing through, CPS has been in the news a lot lately, and as I browsed through the articles, 
one word, despite the issue, one word was in every single one. Anonymous, or being, making a quote in anonymity. Those quotes were all made by teachers. Why on earth would a teacher not put their name to an issue that I know CPS is dedicated to listening to teachers and resolving issues? It's been said in this room. You welcome input from your most valuable resource. You appreciate their work, and it, it brings me pause. The second is sec uh, public comment. We, Dr. Stiepelman, we have often not agreed on some things, but I do agree with you on this. This is a quote from an article from the Missourian Online, and um, it was written by Diana Panuncia. It reads, Steepleman said comments like Graham's, involved parent advocate, at previous school board meetings have been a wake-up call. Those comments were something we needed to hear. Your stakeholders do need to be heard. And any idea of curtailing that is truly a loss. They support you fiscally. And listening to issues that are real should be a priority. Gosh, when you have a lot of people show up for parent-teacher conferences, you're happy, not defensive. You're excited, even if they're critical, because they might have some ideas that need to be listened to. That parent was not the first, I can guarantee you. I went to, to um, Jeff Middle School when it was Jeff Jr. grew up in this town. Those steps have been approached by many individual parents. Kids on crutches couldn't get to third floor classes. This is not a new issue. But the fact that there were so many people who articulated this, this isn't right, this is an accessibility issue, this is not new. The school is ancient. But because people showed up and spoke up, as Dr. Steepleman said, Things needed, things were heard that needed to be heard. Good evening. I'm Dr. Jackie Sample. I'm an occupational therapist and educator and the parent of a child with a disability. I'm here tonight to discuss the proposed change to the public comment policy. Last month, the Missouri School Boards Association gave a presentation at this meeting on public comment. They reminded you that the goal of public comment is to, quote, receive information and input from the citizens, students, parents, and staff that you serve, end quote. Following the presentation, we started off public comment portion by emphasizing the desire to give each and every one of us who were at that meeting the opportunity to speak. The proposed policy that was reported this weekend on limiting these opportunities is not reflective of the MSBA presentation at the last meeting or the warm reception to the brave parents, students, and community members who spoke up at last month's meeting. Limiting the amount of time allotted to receiving public comment does not align with the values of Columbia Public Schools or the values of democracy. It is disingenuous to ask for feedback, accept it, then immediately turn around and say, no, never mind. We actually don't want to listen to you. To tell the Tribune last month's meeting lasted so long due to public comment that was not relevant to the agenda items up for discussion at the meeting is a mischaracterization of events. At last month's meeting, 39 people took the opportunity to exercise free speech and engage in a democratic process by participating in the public comment portion of, this, of the evening. Only five of those speakers did not discuss an explicit agenda item. Each of them had the best interests of our children and our school district in mind. In politics, we can often discuss signaling that the explicit actions of a politician may have implied and intentional consequences. 
This attempt to change policy is clearly retaliation on advocacy. Despite the strong encouragement of parents to get involved just last month in a Missourian article, we are being systematically silenced. Your intolerance for sitting through long meetings does not constitute a need for limiting my ability to publicly voice my concerns as a parent, a taxpayer, and a voter. I don't wanna sit through five hour school board meetings either, but I also don't wanna sit through hours and hours and hours of IEP meetings and behavioral plan meetings with no means of recording as it's already been discussed for my future reference. I would urge the board to invite parents to join into the conversation about how to make these school board meetings more efficient if that is the purpose of limiting public content. But please remember that limiting public content will not increase the efficiency of board actions. Until there is a plan, we will begin holding press conferences following these school board meetings beginning tonight. Anyone is welcome to attend the press conference and to speak until they feel heard. <coughs> We will continue to hold these <coughs> meetings until there is a plan in place that does not include limiting public comment. Thank you. Point of clarification. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sable, there's nothing on the agenda that is, that is suggesting that we would restrict or to limit public comment. Nope. I think you're referring it to a Tribune article. Correct. And it so I wonder if the board president would be willing to uh, clarify because mm -hmm. there's nothing tonight. In fact, the form that was created is to expand opportunities for people to continue to give us feedback. So I hope that, that it gets clarified because it's just yes. poor reporting. Okay, well, and, and the, when I looked at the agenda, there was, it was referred to as a statement by the board president. Yeah, but the, under the statement, there's nothing that, you'll hear the statement of the board president tonight. They're not taking a vote on anything, and you'll hear, I hope, uh, that there's no mention of public comment. So it was just bad reporting. Okay, well, I look forward to hearing the statement. Thank you. Excuse me, can you say that again? Aisha Vishnani. So I want to speak on the same issue that's being brought up right now. I want to specifically speak on, um, just a few minutes ago, the silencing um, of parents, the silencing of a mother who's coming here to speak about issues that she's, being, she's having um, with the school district. Um, Candace Barnes just came here to talk about the treatment of the, her children and the experiences that she's had, and she was silenced today. What does it mean um, for you all to create a space where you listen to parents and students, um, and when they do come, when they find that they're, the districts and the people that they are working with are unable to meet the demands and to meet their needs um, and to make sure and ensure that their students are having the proper education. What does it mean for them to bring those issues up and the council decides that those can't be heard, right? So if, um, if those individuals are coming here today to take public comment, to take time out of their day, um, just like they did at the last meeting, what does it mean for us to silence them? Um, I think it's really important for us to look at these issues because public comment is essential um, part of the space, right? You all sit here as a school board with a certain amount of power, and when people come to this podium with their public comments, they're holding the district accountable, you all accountable, and they're, most importantly, they're ensuring that their students' education is advocated for. Um, when we are talking about kind of the public, for, public comment form, we now have a form set up for students, for people to fill out, um, where they have to detail exactly what they are going to say um, prior to the meeting, and they have to sign in. So now we have this kind of barrier to entry. If you don't fill out the form, if you don't sign the paper, if you don't articulate what you exactly want to say, you're not able to gain access here. And then once you are, um, once you're able to gain access, what is it that you are allowed to say? If you have something that you're trying to bring up, you're silenced because those issues um, are certainly now derogatory, rather than be being a point of discussion. Hey, we need to talk about these problems. So I think it's really important for us to kind of look at the public comment policy, see why we're criticizing it and who we're prioritizing. Are we prioritizing the district or the needs of students and parents who are kind of gaining an education. I think the district is important, right? An important part of the conversation. But it's really, really important to make sure that students aren't at the expense of what we're trying to do here. And I know that that's what you all are here to do. Um, so I think it's really, really important to look at who we're silencing here today, um, why we're silencing them, and then why we're not um, engaging in those issues um, and making sure we're making uh, that those needs are met. Um, how are you going to engage Miss um, Wade um, 
Ms. Barnes outside um, of this system afterwards because you asked her, right, to, to um, send a letter. Um, so how are you going to en engage her outside? Um, so that's really, really important um, here today. Thank you so much. My name is Michaela Skelton. I am also here to speak about concerns about limitations to the public comment period based on the Tribune article as we read it as citizens and community members. Um, this, it seemed to indicate that there wanted to be a limit to public comment because of the extremely long time that we all sat through a meeting last month. Yes, the meeting was five hours long, but the meeting was five hours long because dozens of parents showed up because there had been no action taken on an, an issue that was so important to them for almost five months. So the parents showed up in force because they weren't being heard by our school board in the regular course of business. They wanted to show up in favor of a policy that they need for their children that is already allowed under state law that we hadn't seen action on, that there still hasn't been action on other than the appointment of a chair to a task force that apparently is against the recording policy already. And we can't show that there is a decent and honest effort at addressing the needs of parents if that is the way that, the pro that we're going to progress through these issues. Um, talking about adopting the policy of the state legislature for more efficient hearings. Um, when we look at the way that our state legislature has been behaving in the most recent, in our most recent years, they're becoming an increasingly more undemocratic institution where they regularly limit debate um, by using previous question motions when they're discussing things on the floor, where they shut down public comment in hearings when they don't intend on ever giving a full public hearing to an issue that they intend on passing anyway, regardless of the public's opinion. Additionally, we don't we need to respect the time of the parents who take the time out of their lives to show up to these public meetings with the desire of being heard. Filling out a form is not the same as having an opportunity to come and stand at a podium and address the people that you want to hear you face to face and in person. And so limiting public comment in any way that would restrict the number of people or the time when folks can come up and discuss their issues with the board in their limited three minutes is disrespectful to the time of the parents and community members that want to have that audience with you, the school board. And so I would respectfully request that there be no, no restrictions to public comment other, outside of what is currently the policy of the Columbia Public School Board. Thank you. Hello, my name is Laura Wakefield and I want to say thank you for listening to our public comment and you're here for another round of it I see and I appreciate that um, it's a volunteer job and most of the information that we bring you isn't meant to be some type of negative criticism it is meant to help all of us work together to achieve that common goal of looking at the critiques and saying, what can we do to make this better? What can we do? Your goal is to be CPS best, so how will you do that? Here are some examples from the past week I wanted to update you on. I learned that Columbia Public Schools did an amazing thing by sending all of the media specialists to the school library conference last year, and the focus was inclusive literature. They came back from this training and said it was one of the most amazing experiences they ever had. I really appreciate that that was prioritized for them, that there was a budget put to that, and that they were given time to go and do that. They brought back these incredible lists to share with parents. Um, several of the school districts, I mean, several of the school buildings spent their entire uh, library budget on purchasing all of the books from the list. And I had the privilege of listening to one of the media specialists read one of the books to a class about disabilities and it was a wonderful way to invite them into understanding and creating this inclusive mindset that we've been talking about and I think that is the journey that we are looking for we're looking at how do we change and make an inclusive mindset 
And I want to share that that positive experience, that that was prioritized with you to show you that I do see those things. We all see those things. Sadly, those lists haven't been communicated with all the parents. They would love to know that you, this had been done. They would love to be invited in uh, by the media specialists and look at those, those lists. They would love to have those lists sent out to them. Uh, I know Como SEPTA would love to help um, other maybe buildings that didn't have enough money you know, in their budgets to purchase all of those books to maybe supplement that. That's the type of thing that SEPTA would like to do. So in looking in that inclusive mindset, I go back to what do we need to do? I'm gonna talk about the recording policy. We gotta step back on that because I know we've been focusing on like the IEP part, but I wanna step back bigger. The ADA part is what we really need to hit because that's already supposed to be in policy and there aren't procedures for that. We have parents with disabilities who don't have a child with a disability but they have a disability themselves. So any type of parent-teacher conference, they need to have accommodations. We need to expand that inclusive mindset and look at that. And whenever a parent says, I have a disability to a teacher, they need to offer an accommodation to them. Thank you. You thought you wouldn't hear from me, huh? <laughs> Uh, my name is Michelle Robato. Um, I basically just wanted to come up and thank you for last uh, the last board meeting. It was very long. These chairs are very uncomfortable. Yours are a little more comfortable, but it was still very Not long. Much. And I, but I do appreciate that. And I appreciate that we were able to, um, you, you took action. And I really appreciate that, the task force. And then taking that seclusion and restraint policy back to review that at this coming policy meeting, I really um, I thank you for that. I also wanted to um, point out, because I think maybe some people don't know that you can reach out to Dr. Stiebelman. Um, I thank you today for clarifying the recording task force. Um, I, had, I got some misinformation, and so I went directly to Dr. Stiebelman. The, the information I got was that um, within CPS walls, um, the task force was being reported as to only prepare if they were forced to change it through legislation. Um, when I contacted Dr. Superman, he clarified everything, and so I just want that to, you know, the community to know that too, that um, as a board we can reach out and you guys do respond to that. So I appreciate, I appreciate that. Um, but I, I, I am concerned also about that uh, email that went out. So if there's any way you can clarify that to the teachers, um, we are not attacking the teachers. Um, I'm not, I think we have wonderful teachers, so um, that, that was something that was concerning to me. Um, I definitely, I'm very curious to hear what, if, what changes are um, taking place with the, with the um, public comments, so I'll just kind of wait and see what happens there. Thank you all. Hi, Tara Warney Griggs. It's been a while since I've been here. Um, oh, you'll see me twice tonight, actually. But um, I'm here tonight speaking on behalf of Lisa Jackson and Hezekiah Jones. Um, I'm going to bring us back to uncomfortable topics about race and equity, um, particularly um, as they they intersect with issues of disability. Um, the lack of accountability that I have seen over the past. 18 months that I've been working with the Jackson family has been really concerning to me. Um, and you all don't see me here very often, so I don't come here lightly when I say these things, so I hope you take that seriously. Um, it has been, I have watched um, administrators at the district level and at the school level undermine a family who has done nothing but try to help their child. I've had those same administrators then tell me in phone calls that if I knew certain things, that I would have a different opinion. Knowing, but they couldn't, of course, tell me those things. Just a subtle way to try to gaslight me into shutting up and asking questions, um, and to throw a family under the bus. And I want to point out two different experiences. Um, so we have um, two African-American adopted boys um, who we now homeschool because of these very concerns. Um, whenever we would go to IEP meetings, because they both have different kinds of disabilities, our concerns would be taken seriously, even if we were not prepared, because there are two white women with PhDs sitting in the room. 
oh, well, we know that you would have remembered to bring this. That's how the conversation would go. And I've said it in meetings with <coughs> Ms. Jackson and her representatives, with her stacks of paper documenting every conversation, every meeting that she's ever been to, be dismissed, humiliated. I've listened to recordings of phone calls where her son was in the room while she was berated by school officials for not being able to pick her son up in time when he was being inconvenient. Um, these are real deep concerns. And so when I tell people I homeschool my children, it's really, it's really sad for me because one of the reasons we wanted to move our family back to Columbia was because we thought the Columbia Public Schools were fantastic. Um, and for many kids, they are. <coughs> for my kids, they have not been. Um, and for other kids, they've been much worse. Um, and we've sat in IEP meetings with our son who has some real learning challenges. Uh, you know, we're not gonna sugarcoat that. And he doesn't always handle them in the best way. I'll be done in just a second. Um, okay. Ma'am, I think we have to finish that. Right. I'll finish up super fast. fast. Um, Ma'am, your time is up. Your time is up. My point taken, I hope. Yes, ma'am. Steve, we can. One quick thing, I was here before. So I apologize for coming up again, but I just want to ask the chair lady if it would be too difficult for her to look up at people when they're speaking. You bet. Thank you. Just in response to that comment, every single one of you that come up, I write down what you say so that I can look at it again later and I can think about it. And at times, we talk about it because we do listen to what you say. Every single one of you, whether you email us or you call us or you show up here, we listen and we discuss what you say because we are here to listen and we are supposed to be responsive. Thank you. So since you're engaging me, I'll engage no. back. Yes, you have. Sir, you if you'd me. like to come up you and would, make public comment. You would comment. engage me. You, you wanted to comment to me. So out of two, order. Now we have a two-way comment going. We're out of order. Please respect the people in front of you and look at them. They don't pay me enough for this, I'll tell you that right now. My, my, uh, all right. my name is Elizabeth Condon. I am a recent Columbia transplant. I grew up outside the St. Louis area. Um, I have my degree in political science and political walk. I will first say that I do not care that you're not getting paid enough to be here. You are an elected official. Yes, it is I do your my job, job you to be much. here but you're not here to complain about it. So let's get that out of the way to begin with. Okay. I have never, ever heard such disrespect from people who serve the community of people who are standing behind me and who are sitting in front of you and who keep showing up and who also sat through that grueling meeting last month. It is extraordinarily convenient to hide behind the excuse of poor reporting when there is no supporting document under the presidential statement agenda item. It is inappropriate. I have sat through grueling meetings over everything from vaccination requirements to Title IX reform. Sometimes it doesn't seem important. A lot of times we know the legislation won't go anywhere, but the legislators in Jefferson City sit there and they listen and they don't send emails out to their staff and faculty afterwards mischaracterizing the actions taken. And if you did truly listen to what is said at these meetings, you would not have sent the email saying that these parents were disrespecting the teachers and the faculty in this school district because I have also never seen a more respectful group of parents who appreciate their school district more. Last night, I was messaging with somebody who spoke at this meeting last month because I watched the whole thing last night in preparation, complimented her on her shirt, thanked her for her work, because one day, my future children will probably be enrolled in Columbia Public Schools. And I hope by then that the attitudes of these board members 
significantly change or I'll be living elsewhere and I'll take my tax money elsewhere and I will take my children elsewhere to get out of this school district and away from this leadership. Thank you. And all I'm asking is to build a better relationship, teachers as parents, stop criminalizing our children, stop putting them <coughs> to where they're something they're not to be. They're children, they're not adults, okay? Um, also, I want to say that before you decide to call CPD, you must contact with the parent. That is very important. It is very scary that a parent have to wait to after their job to see that their children has been arrested, fingerprinted, interview roomed, don't know if they're being read their Miranda rights or anything. These are children, not adults. We are here to, as parents, as teachers, to help our children learn, growth, not criminalize them, and turn them out to monsters before they grow up. They are, they are human beings. They have emotions too. This is a learning process. We already know what they need to be learned. You know, and report this bullying, harassment. Do deeper investigation before you decide to pick and choose what you want to see or what you want to hear. You know, there's a lot of children that don't have a voice. There's a lot of children wants to be heard. There are so many children now six feet under because you guys left them alone. They commit suicide. Don't make them feel this way. Be there for them just like we, we all grown up as parents, as teachers since day one. We are the teachers. It's time to do better. Save our children, please. Because it's, hurt, it's hurtful and it's, every day it's so sad to see them. Some children have never experienced being held down by a police officer, being in handcuffs. And when they be speaking out, teachers don't listen. They're too spontaneous or they're judged by the book by its cover. It's deeper inside than what it is. Save our children. Stop calling CPD to arrest them all the time. Listen to them, investigate. That's all I ask, better communication. Call the parent at least before you decide to arrest our children. Thank you. Any further public comment? That will conclude our public comment section. That will bring us to the report of the board president. First, we will hear from the Columbia, Missouri National Education Association and the Columbia, Missouri State Teachers Association. Today, first, we'll hear from Kathy Steinhoff of CMNEA. 